Hello everybody, welcome to the final round of the NAF World Cup Qualifier 2024. We've got Kalon with Dark Elves up against Shanba with Lizards. Um, Kalon is kicking, I don't know who won the toss. He's gone for this offset, it's like the Gdynik setup, it's similar isn't it? Like it's a variation essentially, but you know, three on the LOS offset, four and then four protected. Interesting that he's exposing the blitzers. Because of course there's no there's no tackle hit them. So they are quite durable. And they're also further forward to take advantage of things. I do actually prefer the proper Gadenic setup, which would be this witch elf here or here. Um you know, and just just like being a bit more aggressive in um in going for the ball. But um as it happens, the ball goes to the side. Skills-wise, it's fine, isn't it? This is a pretty standard take. Um, okay, so all benching the runner. Okay, so this is what the this is what the runner people do. They bench the runner. That, that can't be right. Can oh god. Well. That seems weird because I'd rather just have like a dodge assassin on the pitch, right? I'd rather just have a dodge assassin on the pitch because you could you could protect him here. I'd, I'd want him on the pitch, um, but not. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Obviously six block for Shamba. Shamba had the exact same team as me, only 11 players, but three re-rolls. Yeah, yeah, like, it's it's fine, like, benching on Skaven, right? Because you'll want to re-roll for the one turn, so you're not really losing anything by benching him on Skaven. But benching him on Dark Elves means you're losing a reroll on defense. That seems that seems definitely wrong. <laughs> definitely wrong. I mean, to me, it's wrong. In my opinion, I would want the skills that I paid for on the on the pitch. Slightly different with Skaven, because Skaven the one turn is so high out. Um, or, even, like, or Underworlds as well, right? But like, this guy can contribute on defense, right? Like he's only plus move minus AV, like he's, he's fine. I can guarantee he's having him for your offensive drive, but I don't feel like he's that good on offense to guarantee getting him. Hello Christopher B. And the Gralius, yeah, and the uh, Bucky. Gosh. Jimmy Foobtastic, no boobs, and I do apologize. Zero boobs on this channel. Maybe, maybe I need more boobs on the channel, maybe that's the answer. But I'm thinking like, you know, more YouTube and uh, more consistency. Oh my God! Obviously, instant apple here because it's badly hurt. So the apple is gone for Shamba. Well done, Kalon. Absolute dice lord. I mean, it's pretty good, right? You know, it, it was it was lucky, obviously, to get the cars and no send off, but it was the right thing to do, wasn't it? Like, I mean, not categorically the right thing, because of course he could have just screened and stuff, but it was a, it was a high percentage play, I think. You know, um, get round, get the hit, and get a huge assist. Foul is pretty good, isn't it? Pretty decent odds to work. A good route to win, removing Saurus makes uh, makes your job a lot easier on defense. It's not like the lizards can take advantage of your like you know horrendous position you've given up this turn. Particularly.
I mean, he is getting forward, but the, the problem is, like, he can't score early, right? Like, if Shamba scores early, he just loses. So, this is going to get tricky for him. Tricky, tricky, tricky. Rub their foot into the ground. I've got no idea. Am I going to have to look at all of the enemy? Oh, yeah. Let's just watch him for a while. <laughs> He's not going to do it now, is he? He did it twice, and this guy's just stood there, like, going, No, I actually won't. It was like Kalon just determined to foul. I feel like he could have, you know, collapsed in a bit here and done something around the ball, but I'm going to go for another foul. And it's a big one, to be fair, and then he can start trying to defend after that. Probably should have got another assist in here. Oh my god. The look of dog. So yeah, that's uh it's looking brilliant now, isn't it, for uh Kalon? He went high risk, high reward, and he got the reward. You know, maybe uh, maybe Shanba shouldn't have allowed them to be isolated, but then there's only so much you can do, right? Like if people are, if people you know try to set the two into two, it's uh, they can they can frenzy you away no matter how you. So sort of like I guess you could have like stayed more compact, or like kind of trying to try to force kind of frenzy traps, you know, like uh, hits into assist and stuff. But, uh, look at the Irish, yeah. Yep, I mean that's enough that's enough to, you know, probably get himself like at least a two turn, right? Now he can just start defending properly. And at least get a two turn chance to score. And win two one. Hello hard grim. Hard grim? That's <laughs> what I said. Hard grim. Hello, hard grim. <laughs> yep. This is the final round. Both of these guys are on 10 points. If they win, they'll go to 13 points and then maybe can qualify, right? Like, they need other results to go their way. Both of them need a lot of luck to qualify. Yeah, stomping their cigarettes. Yeah, that's what it is, isn't it? Yeah. Yep. Yep. So he obviously now is... Which elves are so far away he can't realistically go for that. I mean, I guess he could have tried, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. And then he could have hit there. And then there, and he could have tried, like, another big gang foul. But, um... Realistically... Get back and try and defend a bit now. Is he going to 1D the Crocs? That's what it looks like, what he's doing. I wouldn't say I'm in dire need, Hargrim, but if you if you want to join, you can. <laughs> oh my god, he re-rolls the skull. Wouldn't have done that. I really wouldn't have done that, right? With two. Uh, so I guess the thing here is... If he forces the score, he'll have a reroll on his drive because of the runner. Um, hello, Jimmy. Hello, Hargrim. Hardgrim. Oh, I was just about to say. <laughs> I hope you're not. Honestly, that would be really <laughs> awkward. 
I wouldn't be comfortable with that. It's you know, it's okay for other people, but you know, it's, let me let me not enjoy that sort of thing. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, it's very interesting, isn't it? A bit, a bit of a uh, bit of tabletop kind of stuff. That's your element, isn't it? I heard you you got nicknamed 007 because you were so good at tabletop. Is that? Is that yeah, I'm the, I'm the best at tabletop. That's why they call me Mr. Bond. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty good, isn't it? <laughs> or it could be because somebody like tried to lazy your balls. <laughs> <laughs> just like get hair removal. Mm. Oh wow, he's going. He's well. He's not really going back. He's just staying where he is. No need for him to go forward or go backwards. No, yeah, he's, he's, just, fine. he's just beating them off. Yeah. The I mean, slow burn. Both downs would have been a little bit prob problematic, but, uh, yeah. Could Good thing get, he had that backup Saurus. Could get the uh, Crocs surfed here, couldn't he? Yeah, Crocs is getting surfed. Well, he has put in the, has put in the Saurus to... Uh, Saurus. To help, yeah. yeah I'll, I'll share this on uh, on Discord so you can you yeah. can be up to date if you want. Oh, being up to date is grand. <laughs> it's, it's grand, so it is. <laughs> Just like Kalorn would say. Yep. Oh no, that's his last reroll gone. No, he doesn't reroll it. Oh. No, you don't reroll that. Ah. Diced again. Now he can just say he was diced. Yeah. It's Cold dicing. One. GG. Mm. Well, I guess Shamba just does the same thing again. Beats beats off the, this elf and then stays where he is. Yeah, everyone likes beating off elves. Mm. They get nice and stiff from it. Oh, God. It's actually <laughs> the opposite. It's actually the opposite. <laughs> Have you never heard of rigor mortis? <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> that shouldn't be the normal reaction. <laughs> Short is grand sorted. <laughs> I mean, I, like, I feel like Kalon should be trying to take advantage of the fact that Shamba's down two Saurus. Wait, he's down two Saurus? What the hell happened? Um, Kalon blitzed a guy, fouled him, badly hurt him, Apod, and then blitzed a guy, fouled him, cast him. <laughs> Easy does it. Yeah. Maybe Shanda could have, like, you know, tried to not get his Saurus isolated to get fouled, but I don't know. I don't know how much he is to blame, and, you know, how much it was just, you know, Kalon taking the opportunity for the, uh, for the play. Right, it's certainly worked out for Kalon so far, hasn't it? Incredible. Yeah, very lucky. I mean, sure very lucky. Yeah, you've got to be lucky to just, like, take out two Sauras in two turns. Mm -hmm. And then not get sent off either. Yeah. Each time you like about a third to get sent off, aren't you? And, uh... Oh, God. Croc dodge. And then I guess about 40% or something to... to remove them, so... Like it's it's a worthwhile trade, isn't it? Like it's it's a good trade. Like it, but it is, it is trading a lineman for a Saurus, and the Saurus is gone permanently. You're happy with that trade? Yeah. Um, I don't think it's a misclick. I think yeah, just avoiding the surf. Yeah, he wanted him. Yeah. Up, didn't want him surfed. Yeah. So just dodged him. But he's armor nine, and we all know armor nine is never broken. So that was the <laughs> that was the plan. Armor nine never breaks. Armor nine never breaks. Yeah. Oh, 10 plus now, isn't it? 10 plus. Sorry. My apologies, tabletop fanatics. <laughs> 10 plus. It's mad, isn't it? Because, like, you know, there will be quite a lot of people who've started in Blood Bowl 2024. And, uh, sorry, Blood Bowl 2020, not 2024. Second season, isn't it? Blood Bowl second season. And they'll actually just think of AV being 10 plus and they'll think GFIs are rushes. Like, it's weird, isn't it? Yeah. It's just like every. Every player I've played that has played since, like, CRP 2016 and before still call it go-for-its. But yeah. anyone who started afterwards call it rushes. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, this was a bit... Fascinating, isn't it? 
This was a bit bad by Kalon, wasn't it? He, th this guy should have been out one, and then these two should have been four to try and stop the stop the switch because this is like he made the switch really easy, le letting Shamba get in the middle of the pitch. Like if you keep him pinned side down down the side, it's good. Letting him get in the middle is very very bad. Yeah, it is. Centralizing is always good for the stronger teams. For any team, and I would say, just, just cause it's like yeah. it's like uh, three hundred, isn't it? You know, like it's a, it's a lot easier to defend on like a small frontage than it is when you've got to defend like the whole pitch. Like now, this this skink can go to go to either corner, can't he? And he can like what he can go laterally three squares, can he? Four, five, six, seven, eight, GFI, GFI. Yeah, so he can go three squares, and like so, it's it's super easy for him to get in the end zone with this guy. Whereas if he's stuck on the stuck on a side. He has to roll a million three pluses. Hmm. Mm. Oh yeah, add yeah, add two plus yeah. Oh my god, add two. Whoa, okay, now the last three rolls come in. Was spicy. Yeah, blockless blocks. Can't do it. Be making. He'll be making. He'll be making Artemis sad somewhere in the world. <laughs> <laughs> What? Oh, did that? you see the red? Did you see the Reddit post that Art put up? Yeah, <laughs> it's great, isn't it? <laughs> he went fucking mental. <laughs> yeah, Art's done a big crazy post, like saying, uh, you know, stop recommending Bonehead podcasts because they're shit, basically. Oh wow! Oh, so it, it gets was... the five plus and the sack. Yep, yep. So five plus in with dodge, and then obviously frenzy. So two hits at it. it was a two into two. It was with block. So he has popped the ball, um, and this this is the problem, isn't it? As, as, as lizards versus elves, they can just always come in on a five plus to hit you. It's it's really horrible, really horrible. The good thing the good thing Shanba did when he was on the side was he managed to always make it a six plus no matter which direction oh, he wanted god. to go in. Oh, oh. god, Kaelon! <laughs> I mean, it's only a four plus <laughs> without a reroll. Fifty-fifty, and another four <laughs> plus to pick it up. It's not what I. Would yeah, have done. no, it's not what I would have done either. <laughs> I think you just stay there. Yeah, I guess, so. I guess what he's thinking is, um, like he's running out of time to score himself. Right, he's only got two turns to score himself. But he should have probably been thinking, stop the score, get the win, and then see what happens. because yeah. he kind of does have to score two. The problem is, he kind of does have to score two because the dream scenario for Shanba and Kalon is um, me winning my game, tree drawing with Whirly Dervish, and then Dave or losing because he's only scored six touchdowns. So him not scoring and losing. And then he's got six touchdowns. And Kalon's only got five. So Kalon would actually have to score two touchdowns and win to go above Dave or if Dave or loses without scoring any. So like it's, it's really hard for Kalon to qualify. So actually... Although that that jump looked a bit stupid, given the context that he has to score two touchdowns, I'm going to let him off a little bit. He probably should have been more aggressive earlier, right? Once he got those two removals, he probably should have immediately turned more aggressive. Yeah. And this is, I mean, this is the thing I've been talking to Seabrils about, is when you start seeking contact with Dark Elves in, in most matchups. And I've been a heavy advocate that you start on turn five, but when I used to play Dark Elves, I started on turn two. But that was a matter of stylistic choice. I think in this matchup in particular, you can look for contact around turn three, four, and just try and create as much pressure as possible because he can't always just dodge himself out of the problem or yeah. block himself out of the problem. Yeah, I mean, definitely turn three when you've removed two Saurus, right? Um, Absolutely. Of, of Absolutely. course, Seabrol's heeded your advice by just by just deciding to simply remove all of the necromantic and then he was when he was able to <laughs> able to base at will then <laughs> funnily enough dark elves with a three man advantage rather good at basing up who would have thought yeah what i i don't understand three players punching somebody <laughs> on turn I 7 i am very confused yeah. Oh, oh, I guess we're surfing the crocs. We're just giving up. That seems. Yes, we just let him score. See, giving up seems not as good as five plus dodging in to hit no, a skin. I won't give in <laughs> until I'm victorious. And I will defend. I will defend. And you can try and win two on the second half. 
I get all yeah. my BB advice from Shower Thoughts podcast, Not even dead. Jimmy. Diced. <laughs> glorious. Thank you very much, Jordan. Staying fantastic for a glorious 82 months. Unbelievable. Thank you so much. And yeah, Shower Thoughts podcast was a brilliant idea from Odon for me and Andy to do a podcast and call it Shower Thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> It's actually genius, isn't it? Surely there must be a Shower Thoughts podcast already because it's actually just a great name for like a generic podcast, isn't it? It is. It's a, it's a, it's an actual great name. Oh, there's a daily Shower Thoughts podcast on Spotify. Like Shower Thoughts is an incredible. Oh yeah, there you go, the Shower po- Thoughts podcast. Oh, they do play Oh. It's only got it's only got fifty six followers. All right, your shower thoughts podcast is a go. <laughs> <laughs> Fancy a shower? <laughs> <laughs> that was the best. Right, there you go. Anyway, yeah, obviously Shanda scored. Um, it almost got a bit tight because he rolled the double skull. No. Quite. And these K- KOs here, pretty annoying for Kalon, isn't it? Well, he gets another attempt at it, it just means the one turn is really, really diff- difficult. I would have written off the one turn anyway, so. Like, move seven. It's too hard. I, even with Edge 4, just forget it. I, I, it. I think is really the best attitude. <laughs> <laughs> like, because otherwise you've got to like, set up somebody surfable, right? Yeah. If you're gonna do like an anti one turn setup, I don't think that's worth it. So, um, or an anti a push denial setup. So a push denial setup is gonna leave somebody surfing probably. Um, somehow. Um, being down a being down a saurus, uh, not fun to get another saurus surfed. Exactly. Yeah. So just set up anti riot or um, or backline. Like one yeah. of those, I think, is a lot better than trying to set up in a push denial formation. But yeah, the yeah, the art the art the art Reddit post is pretty fun. Yeah. <laughs> it's fucking hilarious, it is. Somebody somebody called me and him the uh, the most toxic bastards in Blood Bowl or something, which is quite good. <laughs> Mister Toxic himself. Yeah, Jimmy may be good at Blood Bowl, but he's kind of a huge douche. Makes sense though, because him and Artemis are the two most toxic assholes in the whole community. <laughs> Huge douche is kind of an understatement. I'd never heard of Jimmy before he started posting this sub, but the attitude he's shown here has ensured that I'll never check out his content. <laughs> <laughs> cool, that's one less anti. Well, that's one less fun person in your channel. Yeah, yeah, brilliant, isn't it? Yeah. By all means, stay the fuck away. <laughs> Did I used to be more of an asshole? I, uh, to be fair, I, I was a bit of an asshole at points. It, it like, uh, yeah, I, I was. I was really bad actually. I was really bad. I was really bad with Andy. To be fair, like that was. I, I didn't even realize how bad I was either until like I was told later, and I was like, oh shit. So yeah, I was really bad with Andy earlier. But um, I think I remember. Mostly... I remember that problem when I used to be a rebel admin. Uh, <laughs> and, those were the days yeah and and that's like mostly i think people just don't get my sense of humor and don't like my honesty i'd say they're they are the two biggest things that contribute to be me be being called a toxic asshole because if somebody's shit and i say like this is shit <laughs> like i'm not gonna not say oh, oh good effort like, you know in the olympics uh, they go good effort they finish 17 <laughs> it's not a good effort <laughs> it was shit <laughs> so like you know while some people would tap their head and say oh well done little timmy um or do whatever like you know people ask for advice and then they say like do whatever like you know something about being more fun it's like well but if if i'm asking for advice i want advice i don't want like you know things that can be fun like do you know what i mean like that always doesn't add in but what what happens is people who often post for advice just literally want you to agree with them right I, i'll never forget i got i got banned from the uh, warhammer 40k facebook page like the official one like run by games workshop because somebody like said um what's the is my list that i'm thinking of doing what do you think and i'm like you can't kill a land raider it's terrible Right, <laughs> which is which is fair. Like he had like you know auto cannons and stuff. Like I think maybe he had like a las cannon. And he's like I've got a las cannon. <laughs> like, 
know if that isn't good enough, you know, like, it was when the meta was like, you know, you had to have loads of stuff. So, like, I explained, like, all why, like, I went into more detail and stuff, like, you have to be able to, like, you know, kill it, like, you need melter guns and all this, blah, 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 blah. And then he just started calling me toxic and everything, and, and then I ended up getting banned, and it's like... Because people just don't want advice. They just literally want to say, oh yeah, you're brilliant, you're the best, that's a fantastic idea. For the most part. That's what I think, anyway. <laughs> people people don't like being criticised. Yeah. Who'd have thunk? Yeah. But, but I do. Like, that's the thing. Like, if I do something wrong, <laughs> I want to know why it's wrong so I can not do it wrong in the future. And if somebody, like, you know, the people criticise me, you know, like, for being, like, bad at streaming because they're, like, saying, oh, well, Jimmy just commentates and he just laughs with his co-host and doesn't talk about, like, things. And I'm like, all right, that's good. That's great, isn't it? Like, that's, that's actually great to me. Like, saying I'm a toxic asshole isn't because that's just stupid. But, like, saying things like, you know... You know, he doesn't concentrate enough on the game. Things like that's brilliant, isn't it? You know, like I think, I think that's what I, I'd much rather have. Like you know, one person say your sound is too low <laughs> than, <laughs> than nine people say, "Oh, you're the best." <laughs> you know, not that any, like... not that anyone's ever said that. But <laughs> 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 It'd be nice if one person said that one day. <laughs> but you know. Yeah, I mean, there's also degrees of, like, criticism, right? There's the difference between saying, you're shit, do better, and, you know, you could improve in this area or in this aspect. Yeah, yeah. And I think a lot of people misunderstand, like, oh, what do you think? And someone just going, it's shit. Like, <laughs> thanks, that helps me a lot. I really appreciate your sound advice. <laughs> your yeah. parents must love you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, literally, honestly, he went apeshit because he just didn't eat, like... This was, like, when the meta was, like, Rhino Rush and stuff, right? And, like, just everybody was like, having, like, two melted guns in every squad and stuff. And this dude was just, like, he had, like, one or two last cannons. And it's like, I've never had any problems. And it's like, okay, but you're asking for a tournament list. <laughs> the, the tournament list that people run will have, like, seven Razorbacks in and stuff. And, like, millions of plasma guns and millions of melted guns. And what do you do against them? You shoot bolts at them and, <laughs> and hope that your las cannon will kill one. Like, it was crazy. That's way too much to talk about that, that thing. But it's still, it, it exemplifies what people think about it, right? They, they do just want you to say, yeah, you're the best. Like, I'm the same as well. Like, you know, like, like... You know the skill up, the skill up questions. You just want somebody yeah. to agree with you, right? Like you, you know, you, you, you trying to decide between God and Mighty Blow, right? <laughs> and then, and then like seventeen people say God, and then one person says Mighty Blow, and then the, the OP's like, yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks. The, people just want validation <laughs> so that they can like, they, they, you know, they can be like that. That happens all the time with various things in real life as well, doesn't it? People, you it's, just want somebody to fucking back you up. It's the internet. Give me my likes. Give me my likes. <laughs> well, not even likes. Just you want you want to like feel that you're not a lunatic, right? <laughs> like, like people jumping off off bridges and stuff. Isn't it? Like you know, lemmings and that jumping off bridges. If everyone else yeah. is jumping off, you like. But if you're like if you're standing at the side saying, "Don't don't want to jump off the bridge," and if someone says it's okay, you don't have to. You'd be like, "Oh, good." You'd be like like the bystander effect, isn't it? As well, that's a thing. Yeah, and, like, yeah, like, yeah. People just want to stick with the crowd and stuff, so they do want somebody to say, "Yeah, you're not mental." Rather than somebody say, no, this idea is bad. This is why. <laughs> and I'm like, fuck you. <laughs> I want to do it. <laughs> Tell me that it's okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Mighty Blood doubles removals, yeah. yeah. Hello, Steve. That's how it works. Yes, all right, obvious master. That's very true, see. But, but still, the fact remains that was good. I mean, that, the, but I counted that with. The problem is, you're watching somebody think for two minutes, and also, Hargrim and I have seen, like, the first turn of a drive, <laughs> you know, like, 3,000 times. And there's really not a lot to say about he's going to move some people around almost at random and make two dice blocks. <laughs> like, it, there's not much rhyme or reason. You can't really break down. Like, lots of the turns, one, one, like, once you're experienced, you just you just gloss over it, right? Because it's just like, this is just normal Blood Bowl. He's just, like, you can't read, like, you know what I mean? Like, it'd be really weird, like, you know, 100 metres, oh, he's managing to put one foot in front of the other here, 
Uh, yep, he's put another foot in front of the other. He's uh, he's going to continue to do that as rapidly as he can. <laughs> like, it's <laughs> like going, wow, holy shit, he's actually running. What the fuck? <laughs> yeah. Like we've seen we've seen turn one a million times. Yeah. It's it becomes interesting to talk about when there's an interesting strategical decision or when someone does something absolutely batshit crazy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like like this was interesting, I guess, that that, that Shanda let this guy three get three diced and then Kalon went for the three dice. Which yeah. you know made him a little bit oh exposed with oh. everything else. He's passing. What? You Maybe insane Kalon. <laughs> Maybe he misclicked. You must have misclicked, yeah. Yeah. yeah he must have done. Well, that's his leader reroll gone. <laughs> yeah, he must have misclicked. It's the only explanation. Tis the only explanation. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, okay, fair enough. I should probably take five seconds on 99% of the time to say he hasn't set up like this in case a blitz has rolled. <laughs> I generally do spend the, the five seconds to say, oh, somebody's actually set up correctly because so few do. Even, even like, you know, Super even like Super League's probably like the highest quality, right? Where people do generally set up against blitzers. But you'll find even the coaches in Super League will often not set up to counter blitzers. And, uh, you know, obviously in my case, a lot of the time I don't have enough players to set up to counter a blitz because I'm using a heavy bash team like Orcs and therefore only have six players against Wood Elves. But usually, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I'll, I'll, well. So what I should do is then I should have a video for like how to set up an offense. How I can then I could say, well, check out my YouTube guide, my YouTube video. And that's better than saying the same thing every time. The thing about setups is there are standardized patterns that you can always use that are going to work pretty much every time. The question is about finding the optimized setup for the matchup that you're playing, and that becomes a lot harder, because it depends on game state, and it depends on are you receiving, are you... Well, obviously it depends on whether you're receiving or kicking. Mm. Um, but, like, it's, it's finding those niche setups that are going to change the game based on the matchup that you're playing that are tricky to find out and that you cannot just do a guide on. Well, I mean, I'm not complaining. Ooh, I thought have, so. I thought it'd have gone this way, and then there's a gaping hole to run around and hit the ball. So you yeah, know, I one, two, three, that, yeah. four, five, six, seven, eight. Just blots the witch instead and roll the full pow. Hmm. Witch alive. I mean, I'm not complaining that similar stuff. I'm just explaining why I'm not that good <laughs> <laughs> and why it's hard. I'm, I'm complaining why I'm not complaining anyway. I'm just telling you. I'm not complaining. I'm telling you why um, it's hard because that that's it, right? Like that that is literally it. Because so when you when you sat there and you know like. I'm, <laughs> I was going to say I'm not, no one's getting paid but like you know obviously Hargrim isn't getting paid right like you know all, none of the co commentators get paid and like I'm getting like you know a nominal amount like very very much appreciate everybody who subs but like do you know what I mean like if I was getting paid you know let's say £200 to commentate this game then I'd probably be a hell of a lot more right like if, when people would pay for coaching then yes everything every little thing is dissected but you you know it's hard to sit here and then like just find the motivation to dissect everything all the time when you'd rather just sit there and have a laugh with your buddies right I mean, that's the thing so it's not easy basically same with like the youtubing right like do you know what i mean like you get about you get about a fucking hundredth of a cent for each view it's pretty hard to like you probably don't even get that much <laughs> a thousandth of a cent per view so like it's pretty hard to like motivate yourself to like you know put on all the work that bonehead podcast does when everyone says like oh why don't you just make better guides than him and it's like well it because it's hard work you basically get nothing for it <laughs> so so therefore you let him make the, the the bad advice and then don't put any out any good advice yourself yeah i mean jimmy keeps me in his basement anyway so you know. <laughs> 
Yeah, yeah, but the questions were good. Well, th- this is the thing. So, if you see, the one where we did get paid <laughs> for the season two finals, um, where there was Adam Savage, a professional a professional presenter, and then there was there was Andy and me, on, and then, you know, in that case, and all, Elliot's pretty good at, at, at focusing on the game. But, like, you know, like then there was a lot more, like, asking questions and stuff and, and talking, like, you know, really trying to talk more about the game, right? Because, you know, we're aware that we're getting paid and it's kind of like an advert for Blood Bowl and stuff. And, like, you know, so we're trying to explain a lot more than normal. So so that one is, like, I imagine the Season 2 finals are, like, definitely the best kind of commentate stuff there. Oh, my God, another blockless block. Oof. That's rough. Yeah. Rough. Rough, rough, rough. 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 It freed up a guy who could have won in 36 dodged. So I wonder <coughs> if he should have just won in 36 dodged. I mean, that was a one in 81, right? So it was better odds. But the problem is, you're one in 90 is your hero, aren't you? And you've only got two. So Yeah, yeah. So it's one of those things where, yes, this is technically higher odds of it all working. But it's probably worth sacrificing some of mm. those odds to um, for re-roll. What's the word? Conservation. Yeah. <clears throat> I wonder what you do here as Kalon. Oh, concede. <laughs> <laughs> Hit the concede button. Just four plus dodge blitz. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, two, five. Yeah, just four plus dodge blitz. Not sure that's the best line though. I think it probably is. Because this I want. This is I'm... horrible. Yeah. Oh, ooh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Because you, you you want to conserve rerolls and you want to score this turn because you want to win. Like you have to win. Yeah. You, you have yeah. to score two touchdowns. You have to win both of those things. I, I just think, yeah, okay, the four plus dodge is horrible, but it's like... I mean, it's still 75%, yeah. right? Yeah. 75, and then you're good after that because you, you, you hit you, you hit the skink, whether you... Like, even if you both down it, it's just you're still in range, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, GFI, GFI. So you're still in range even if you both down it. And obviously, if you yeah. push it, you've got a dodge with dodge. So, um... Yeah, I think. Doesn't matter. Shanba rolled instant full pow into armor break. Into removal. Into removal. <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah. Well, I don't want to be, you know, too too unfair because Shanba's alright, but, you know, like Kalon is, uh, Kalon being, you know, being a big friend of the channel, right? Done loads of commentary and everything. Like Kalon a lot, you know, like, don't, don't dislike Shanba at all, but kind of, you know, kind of be, maybe he's been cheering on Kalon a little bit. Um, but, you know, yeah, from, this is looking From what I've seen, Kalon has definitely had the worst end of the dice. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe he should have come in harder on turn three. That was the thing. After removing two Saurus, maybe he should probably like try to stop the score or get the turnover. Like you know, he tried to get that turnover, didn't he? To to the point of doing the four plus dodge, uh, leap yeah. jump, whatever. Um, four plus jump. Was it a four plus or was it a five? No, two, it, three, it was four. A four. Yeah, yeah, four. It was a four. Four plus jump. So you know, like that—that that was kind of the right idea, but it was a bit too late. So yeah, he probably should have tried to put the hammer down earlier. To you know, should have been more aware, like that one nil win wasn't good enough, right? Like different if you're trying for a two nil win rather than a one nil win, like it, the, the, or a two one. You had to win two nil or two one, like you just had to. A one nil. Yeah, win it's, not sort like, it's sort of like it's sort of like it's sort of like just not crunching down on the gas pedal yeah. once you're ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Is the ball hiding behind the cross? Yeah, yeah, more or less. It's uh, it's up here, down here, whatever you want to call it. Is he going to scatter it? No. No, he surfs the blitzer. Yeah, oh, it's boring. It's not that easy to surf, is it? Yeah, it is. Blitz with the block crocs on the lineman. Uh, block Sora, sorry. Oh, is he? Yeah, I thought he'd already blitzed. Bring it in to mark the ball. No. Two dice with the skink. Oh, d- disregard, I thought it already blitzed. <laughs> if you'd already blitzed, it becomes a bit trickier, right? Yeah. Oh, no, he had this he had this skink here anyway. So, no. <laughs> it wasn't that hard if he'd already blitzed. <laughs> errata, errata, it was very easy. Errata. Yeah, I didn't see this. I thought everyone was based, which made it a bit trickier, but... Yeah, with him being free, it was very easy. Yeah. Oof. Oh, God, it's over. I mean, it's not over, but it's... It's not over, but it is over. Yeah. Surely you don't re-roll this pickup. Mm, I don't know. You could have done. It, I wouldn't have hated it, right? You, you, there is a long way to go with only two re-rolls, but yeah. I wouldn't have hated picking it up because just because of the fact, you know, like what happens, scatters to him, goes out, gets thrown here, <laughs> um, you know, things happen. Like it, it can go disastrously wrong. 
Whereas the chance of something going disastrously wrong, you know, one more time when you're in such a dominant position isn't too high. So I, I, I wouldn't have hated rerolling the pickup. Kelon has uphill yeah. with the witch elf. Well, two plus uphill, two two pluses into two two pluses for a three 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 two two two. You can just uphill with, with this guy, right? You can this guy can just uphill, then the witch can go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I think the uphill with the witch is better because it's two pluses instead of three pluses. I mean, it is better, but <laughs> 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 but the point is, um, you know, he could do with that. Like, what I mean is, it it doesn't need to be as fancy. Do you know what I mean? Or as as yeah. Plus that that could fail, right? So the jump up is a two plus. So jump up yeah, that's fail. true. Um, also, he could block the. So by doing this, which was uh, that was a one D, wasn't it? But now he can block that. That this skink, can't he? Um, and then he no, can, no, it doesn't yes. work. Yeah, it doesn't really, doesn't really work because he, he's, he doesn't stood doesn't first. do um, it doesn't do enough. No. No. Oh. 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 Well, that would have been oh. great on the uphill. <laughs> yep. <laughs> And then yeah, one, two, three, four. Five, now I six, now I suppose seven. he comes in with the lineman for the three plus. No, for the two. Oh shit. No, I think the witch elf. I think honestly, I think this uphill was better because if you think about it, I guess the, the witch elf would have had a blitz, right? The witch elf would have had uphill blitz. No, that doesn't really work either. I think this uphill was probably the best way because um, like if if the witch elf had bought down this guy, like it would have been fine if she'd pushed him twice. But if she both downs it, it gets very hard for this guy, doesn't it? Problem? No, because problem is that lineman is eight squares away from the end zone, so he needs every square for oh, progression yeah, yeah, yeah. Death, just, So the both down is the both down is actually perfect. Yeah, yeah, and the truth is yeah. Yeah, yeah. I just I, I think him uphilling and then the witch elf walking in was was what I would have done. Um, but of course, I would have. I wouldn't have been in this position because I'd already been uh, on, on twelve points. <laughs> <laughs> Way to brush your ego there. <laughs> but funny enough, I am playing. I am playing Lizardman. Um, uh, Kalik. Lizardman. The top ten: four were Dark Elves, three were Lizardmen, two were Wood Elves, and one was Necromantic. You might think that Dark Elves are actually pretty good. They're not bad, are they? Yeah. Yeah, I mean they're pretty good. They're pretty good, like for NAF, for, for like lots of reasons, aren't they? So uh... currently, I think they're probably top three in NAF. Like top three, at least for the current Eurobowl rules, they're like a top three team, mm. and an auto include for any Eurobowl team. Eurobowl's a little bit different because I think Eurobowl like rockets orcs up the pitch because they can actually draw and it's fine, right? Like yeah. whereas if you're trying to win a NAF tournament. You, it's much harder to go five and over six and over three and over the orcs than it is with like dark elves. So yeah. So even though orcs are super strong, it because it's just hard for them to win <laughs> in normal time. They're a bit worse. Whereas with with uh, with Euro Bowl, you can just like oh like like team like same with UKTC right. I think UKTC has got like millions of orcs. The fact that you yeah UKTC has forty five orcs. Yeah. <laughs> forty five. Yeah. Like if you're seeing such a skewed race selection. You've done something wrong in your rule set. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they're just they're just a monster team. They're an absolute monster team, and 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 in a team format, the fact that they, you know, the fact that they never lose, <laughs> but it, it you know makes them better than they never win. Um, yep. But I mean, it, Team Ladonia, Team Ladonia hasn't brought orcs. Wow. Schoolboy error. <laughs> <laughs> but we're also we're also just a four man team, not an eight man team. Ah. Oh yeah, eight man team like. Orcs are, yeah. You'd have to auto include top eight. You couldn't. You couldn't not. Like unless you like had like some weird team consisting of like you know Olivier Dulac um, and you know people like that who just like have a team that <laughs> they love, which they are so far above everybody else at. So you'd need like you know him and then somebody else like with Zons and stuff, and you would just need like eight people like that. To yeah. But if you've got anybody like you know myself or. 
purple goo or whatever that, that can play more than one team <laughs> then they have to take orcs <laughs> like across an eight man team you should have somebody who can play orcs and therefore they should you should have somebody on orcs like almost certainly like, it would have to be crazy crazy like skewed experience to not have anyone on orcs but again, like you couldn't, you couldn't just tell Olivia you're like, no, you're not going to take Skaven, you're going to take Orcs, and you know what I mean? Like, so you you could certainly <laughs> bloody try. <laughs> like, you'll take my Skaven from my cold dead hands. <laughs> what do you mean I cannot place the Skaven? <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, this is over now. So we're not focusing on the game now because it's over, right? So this, this is the problem. I mean, this is this is also incorrect, right? What Kalon's doing? Uh, oh no, maybe not. This is this is good, isn't it? So he's he's going for the witch elf sack. One, yep. two, uh, three, four, um, five, six, seven. Yep. Or maybe a jump? No, the jump looks bad. No, the jump doesn't look good. Yeah. Jump cool. is a six plus. Yeah, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You've got to think about the jumps, though, right? You've got to think about the jumps, even if they're shit. You've, you've, you've got to get into the habit of looking at looking for jumps. And uh, Kalon did, to be fair, in the first half, didn't he? Going for that, going for the four plus jump that would have maybe, yep. you know, maybe gotten the score that he needed. Yeah. So fair play. So yeah, I mean, I've, I've scored touchdowns with jumps. Yeah. It's supposed to happen sometimes. Yeah. No. <coughs> Here we go. Oh, he's running all around the front. Oh, he's not hitting the ball. Oh, I think he probably should have ran all the way around back and hit the ball. Because the fact that that guy was tagging the skink, that's when we think, oh, he's going to come in and hit the ball. Yeah. What was it? A three up, two up, four up? Mm. Yep. Yeah, I think that was worth it. I think so too. Because otherwise you're just kind of consigning yourself to a loss exactly yeah playing for a 1-0 loss <laughs> or a 1-1 draw like is is not the way to go like drawing 1-1 is not not good enough he has to win 2-1 so he has especially to get to especially considering you were up two players in the first half and you could have done a lot mm. more yeah to sort of amp up the pressure yeah i think i think his individual plays for what he was trying to achieve probably weren't that bad but he had to be. He had to have a better understanding of what he had to achieve and how he was going to achieve it. Like you know, like he said as well. He said jokingly, "I'm just going to try and score as many touchdowns as I can and not care about the result." But he really did have to try. And like, you know, and he didn't do it right. He had to try. And it was imperative that he scores two two touchdowns. Yeah. Um, so yeah, he probably should have played less passively than he normally would. And so, and obviously, therefore, what he considers optimal, right? Like, the, the, yeah. the, when we talk about player styles, you know, obviously, Chunter must think that what he's doing is right, right? and Olivia Delight must think what he's doing is right, and and uh, Elliot must think what he's doing is right. Like, they're not just doing it for fun, are they? Like, no, they're, they're playing that way because they think that amount of aggression is the correct amount of aggression. So, so Kalon should have probably played what he thought was incorrect, um, and, because it was and necessitated this is, by the form. This is what. This is what separates a good coach from an amazing coach, is that they can switch these styles whenever the time arises for them. Yeah. Yeah, and, and Kalon didn't. <laughs> yeah. So, not not to be mean, but that's just something to think about. See, so this is the this is the kind of advice that I like, Bobbyus Maximus, is just those little nuggets that you get. That was a pretty good little bit of analysis, wasn't it? And it's, it's hard to just be like, um, you know, he's made two nice blocks here every turn like to me that's like there is so the, the way that i always try and break down things when i help out people with improving their play is are you looking for the mathematically correct turn or are you looking for the strategically correct turn because it that the my answer varies depending on what it is you're choosing if you're looking for the mathematically correct term or turn it's just like, oh, you have a three dice block with block, you have a two dice block with block, you have a three dice block without block, do it in that order. You'll be fine. Mm. But if you're not doing it that way, and you're looking for the strategically correct turn, maybe sometimes you need to look for, oh, I need to make this one in nine blocks so that I can open up for the rest of my turn and make sure I get the ball this turn. Yeah. Though, mostly... <laughs> It's make as many two dice blocks as you can. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
<laughs> yeah, that is true. And and the overblocking thing that a lot of the good players talk about, I think, is very much overblown. And I think punching people is almost always just the right answer. <laughs> Punch as much as you can. Maximize two it blocks you make, two dice blocks you make. It depends on the strategy you know. that you're trying to implement per turn, right? So if you're looking to just take a passive turn where you're not really trying to pressure anything and just, like, play for position, you're all right just taking as many two die blocks with block as you can. I mean, I think that's almost always the best play. That's what I'm saying. Right? Like, yeah. almost always. Yeah. Mm. Thank you for the uh, Dio nugget of knowledge, Odont. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But the thing is, it's just hard to keep doing it all the time, right? That's the thing, probably, is right. Like it, again, it's it's like a hundred meters commentator saying what he's got to do is put one foot in front of the other and keep doing that <laughs> every stride. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, it's it is hard. It is hard. Man. It is hard. Trust me, it's hard. Um, yeah. There's a reason that like no one's doing that, right? Because it's hard, <laughs> and and everyone's got the same complaints about probably everybody who doesn't like watching the games live because like you know they say no, I don't really want to talk about everything through, and like you know people can ask questions like you know like, it's good, like you know I'll, I will try harder, I will try harder, and like obviously when when I'm doing like doing the coaching sessions, which you can which you can buy by the way, just just quietly, then obviously everything does get broken down absolutely in detail, and like you know how to maximize every single block and stuff. Like looking at replay analysis and stuff, but when it's there's like there's obviously like just way too much. Like you know, fucking I, my voice, would, my voice would die if I had to, <laughs> you know, if I had to come and break down every single move, every single turn, like in hyper detail. You'd, you'd be crazy, right? Like so, it is hard. So, is hard. so what what you're telling me is I can pay you fifteen quid just for you to tell me your shit uninstall the game. Not more than fifteen. <laughs> fucking hell. <laughs> is this a charity? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> fifteen quid? <laughs> no, <laughs> no way! Jesus, <laughs> how grim! Um, right, right. So, how much? How much is it then? Seventy-five pound. Seventy-five pound for you to tell me you're shit and uninstall. Yeah. Good. <laughs> <laughs> Can't beat that. That's value. That Hargrim. <laughs> Breaking down every movie. <laughs> if I break down every move, you won't break down after every move. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, it, it, it. I think it is a tricky thing. I think it's a tricky thing to do, just because of the fact that, like, like this is what it is, right? It's just you're watching somebody think for two minutes, and it's like. It's easy for your mind to wander and stuff, and it's easy for you just to, to talk to the person with you rather than just like, like it's it is hard. I'm I'm sure it's hard. Plus, again, like that's the thing as well. It's like the reward. The role. The reward is we're sitting here talking to somebody, <laughs> right? Talking to chat, talking to core commentators. It's like, it's like that's almost all of the payoff there is. It's just it's just a bit of fun. So. Yeah, I, th I think the season two finals commentary much better. Um, and for, sometimes in terms of like fun. content for the game, it was good because you were getting a turn by turn breakdown of what's happening, what's good, what's bad, what do you like, what do you don't like as the commentator, and it's great for newer viewers. But for people like me, it's just like, yep, yeah, I didn't need Jimmy Fantastic to tell me that this turn was all right. <laughs> yeah. Tell me when something interesting happens or wake me up by then. Yeah, but, yeah. But again, it also it also depends on what audience you're trying to reach out to, right? Yeah. And if you're trying to reach out to the experienced coaches, then you need to talk like an experienced coach and talk about the overall strategy that's being implemented. But if you're talking to a newer coach, you sort of need to look at it and go, hmm, well... It's a newer coach. They probably need everything break, broken down as to why what they're doing is correct. Yeah. 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 Well done, or done. You can. You can. Yeah. You can. You can. You can. You can take over the Jimmy Fantastic marketing department. You'll have an amazing salary of, of zero ever. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Uh, Bobius, what I can say for League of Legends esports, now I've worked in that, so I know my way around it, is that they're not exactly aimed at beginner friendly. They talk about the game, they talk about the game states, but like a lot of newer players won't have a bloody clue about what's going on. And most of the casters don't have a clue about what is going on. Like, they're clueless about the game.
Yeah, it's a it's a funny old game. It's a funny old game because, it, yeah, it's just a I don't know, man. It's, I think it's just a weird. It's just a weird thing, isn't it, Blood Bowl? Really? Blood Bowl is a weird thing. <laughs> Blood Bowl is a very weird game. Yeah. Like, there's a lot of regulars, right? There's a lot of regulars that, that, that watch the streams, right? They watch, like, they, you know, obviously, I can say they watch everybody. There's nobody left. <laughs> there, were, <laughs> there was a lot of regulars who would, who would watch, you know, like, Elyod and, uh, and, uh, you know, forgotten everyone who used to stream now. Space Cadet, Rick, me, right. Andy, Page. Like all these people would all page would all stream through the day, and then people would just migrate from one to the other to the other to the other and watch them all day long every day, and, right? And stuff and like, and watching it for entertainment and stuff. And and then so then how many of those people do want you to just go? Right, this is how you maximise blocks every turn. And he's not maximising blocks every turn, <laughs> and. It, it's it is it's 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 hard. It's it is hard. It is hard. I'm not saying I'm correct in the way that I do it. I'm just explaining why it is hard. Even though I'd said I, <laughs> I appreciated this person saying it, and I'm going to try harder. It's it still is hard. And it's hard for a reason, right? It needs to be hard, otherwise everyone will be able to do it. Yeah. Mm. yeah. I mean, there was stuff like that, right? Uh, yesterday, Bobby, there was a there was a play where. Sol was running away with his gutter runner, and uh, Elliot and I both thought he should have made a GFI, and he didn't, and stuff like that. And we talked about all that and thought he should have stood the guy on the ogre and dodged a different guy off than he did. So all things like this. But again, something interesting has to happen for that, right? Whereas this is now <laughs> not interesting at all, right? This game is over, and it's a 2 0 win yeah. for Shanber. So, so at this point, um, yes, okay, there are slight optimizations that we p could probably be talking about, but also the game is fucking over. So neither coach cares about those optimizations anyway. So, it's, so that's that's another thing as well, isn't it? Um, yeah, exactly. It's also very time consuming to break down every turn into its minute little details. Yeah, so yeah. Like yeah. By the time you by the let's say let's say we're breaking down turn one of the first half. If you're breaking down the entirety of that turn about every single small inaccuracy from an average coach, you're going to be in turn four by the time the game's done. Yeah. Or yeah. by the time you're done analysing that turn, and it's like, fuck, now I have to go back. <laughs> yeah, well, that's the thing. Talk that's about like, turn two. Yeah, like replay analysis, like in-depth one, like, you know, you've got, like, my coaching sessions, and you've got, like, Art of Mrs. Penguin Academy things, and then, like, you know, you can go and you can talk about a turn for ages. Like, you could talk about a turn for absolutely half an hour or something. You know, it's taken two minutes. You could you could literally talk about it for ages. I literally I literally spent an hour and a half earlier today with one of the Team Denmark players coaching him about what he could have done better in two different games. I think we looked at, like, a collective of eight turns total. <laughs> and we spent an hour and a half just looking at those eight turns. Yeah, yeah it's very, very easy to just, to just deep dive it like that. Which, but, yeah, um, it's it's a lot easier when you're going over replays, but when you're doing live casts, it's really difficult. Yeah, 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 because you've got the time and you've got how they roll as well, right? Like, whereas at least yeah. like when when you're doing a replay, like you, you pause it and you're like, right, so it should do this. Then if this happens, and 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 this happens. But then when this happens, you, it just happens, and you're like, all oh, right, he's rolled double skulls, <laughs> and then the next thing's happening and stuff. So like, you, you just yeah, you really don't have the time or anything in a, in a live game, and then. You know, maybe I could try more in-depth replays, but then again, you know, somebody was saying they just don't like watching the replays. <laughs> so then, well, if you don't like watching replays, but you want more in-depth stuff, you're basically just not going to get it, I think. <laughs> I think mean, it's pretty hard to, like, go... I mean, it's really hard. You know? And lack of motivation is a big one. I don't know, I'm going to try anyway. I'm, well, I think I'm going to I'm, I'm think I'm gonna try. I'm, I'm not going to say I'm going to try. I think I'm going to try to There's go... There's no harm in trying, is the thing, yeah. right? Well, no, I mean, like, I'm going to try and, like, just stream more in general and stuff, right? Like, and, yeah. and try and try and be a better stream. I think I'm going to try and be, 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 a, be a better stream. I might not, but I might. <laughs> because, again, it's, it's the, saying there's no harm in trying, it's just hard, right? It's effort and commitment. Like, you know what I mean? Like, Andy, Andy's there streaming the same times every day. Come rain or shine, isn't he? Do you know what I mean? Like, and it's, yeah. it's, it's fucking annoying as fuck, right? And playing Blood Bowl is fucking miserable a lot of the time. It's... It's not easy to then and then you know be chipper and stuff and then like you know going about things. It's just it's just not easy, um, especially when a game is going really bad. It's really difficult to be chipper about it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, Rick. How many of us can have a Rick attitude? Not fucking many, I tell you that. 
N- definitely not many can have a Rick <laughs> attitude. But then again, Rick has heads in his freezer, so you know. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Anyway. There's only one way a guy is that positive about a game like Blood Bowl. <laughs> yeah. And the game is hard. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, especially when you're playing as well. Like, you know, like when you're playing as well, it's really hard because the game is hard. And then people are talking in chat that you're replying to and stuff. And then you're trying to talk through everything and you're trying to play the game itself, which is hard. And then the dice are fucking you all the time. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, they get your opponent too, but you don't really care so much about that as you care about they're getting you. <laughs> Which is why there's so many fucking complaints about the RNG. But anyway, um, that was a game. Shamba 1 2 1. Um, I can find. 2 0. 2 0. 2 0. Sorry, yeah, thank you very much. See, you can you can forget what the scores are and stuff, get everything wrong. Very easy to do that. Um, right, I think I have. Where do I have a picture here? Is this it? Oh, no. I put it at the top. Right, there's the draw. So with that win, that puts Shamba up to 13 points and 9 touchdowns, which means he's got a chance if Tree and Whirly Dervish draw, if Seabros and Niaga draw, if I beat or draw versus... No, yeah, if I win or draw versus Kalik, and if Toure beats Andy Devo and Andy Devo scores... Um, one no yeah one two touchdowns if he, if Andy Devil loses scoring two touchdowns then all of those things happen <laughs> two or less <laughs> touchdowns then Chamba can qualify so he's got an outside chance he's still yeah. alive so um, just to reiterate the scoring is 3-1-0 and oh, right yes okay yeah oh look we get two mirror matchups as well Dark Elf Dark Elf versus Lizard's Lizard <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> um, Gotta love me some mirror matches. Yes, yes. Yeah, tr- try, please try to hype it up more. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez, this, this is what you've got to work with when you're trying to stream. <laughs> They're not boring. It's interesting. They have to win, right? The thing about the, the, the mirror matches is Kalik has to beat me to qualify, and I have to win to win the tournament, to have a chance to win the tournament. Kalik has to beat me to... He'll just qualify if he wins. No, not necessarily. To have a chance to qualify, Kalik has to beat me. For me to have a chance to win the tournament, I have to win. Um, Niagara to qualify, has to win. Seabros, to qualify, has to win. Tree or Whirly Dervish has to win to have a chance to qualifying. And honestly, Devo and Turi, if, De- if Devo draws, he's almost certainly out. So basically, Devo has to win. And Turi might score, might win, might qualify with a draw, but is likely to need a... Yeah, he's it, it probably, it, probably all right with a draw. But Devo, definitely not right, because he's only scored six touchdowns, and the tiebreaker is touchdown scored, not touchdown difference. So a draw is pretty disastrous for Devo. Um, yeah. But, you know, we, we don't know, right, because obviously Kalik might not win, and Niagara and Seabros could draw and stuff, so, you know, he might be all right with a draw. But certainly, he's in a lot more danger with a draw than two, Ray. Anyway, that was the... So, the, yeah, five games total, and that was the first one. Um, so, yeah, that's it. Um, congrats to Shanbert. Commiserations to Kalon. Thank you very much, Hargrim. Lovely to have you in the booth. Lovely to be here, as always, Jim. Four. And thanks for watching, everyone. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe, and stay fantastic.